Good morning, wonderful people. I want to welcome you to Mombasa Light of Church, Church Online. Thank you so much for tuning in. May God bless you. And I believe today we are going to be blessed together. I would like to appreciate the worship team for taking us through that session of worship and uh, praise. It was awesome. And I know you are agreeing with me. We speak to the presence of the Lord. I want us to read the word of God from the book of Luke 19, verse 1 through 6. And let's read it together. If you have a Bible there, just turn with me to the book of Luke 19, verse 1 through 6. Verse 1 starts by saying, Then Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. Now behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, who was a chief tax collector, and he was rich. And he sought to see who Jesus was, but could not because of the crowd, for he was of short stature. So he ran ahead and climbed up into a sycamore tree, to see him, for he was going to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him, and said to him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must stay at your house. Verse 6, so he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for a wonderful, wonderful Sunday morning. We thank you for an opportunity to hear your word. We thank you, O King of glory, for you will never leave us nor forsake us. We thank you for you know our thoughts and you know, O Jehovah God, our beginning and you know our end. We appreciate you for the word. We ask you, Lord, to use it today to rebuke us and to correct us and to instruct us in all righteousness. We, want you, we ask you, O God, to open our spiritual ears and our spiritual eyes. Even as we prepare, O oh God, to gain insight and to receive from you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I would like to minister to us on a message entitled, Desires Attract. Desires Attract. The scriptures that we've just read are very important to us today. Because we are discussing or we are reading of a person who was limited in all ways when it comes to physical attraction. He may have been limited in the area of stature. He may have been limited in the area of friendship. But he wasn't limited in the area of curiosity. Many things have been spoken concerning Zacchaeus. People have said he was a tax collector and a chief tax collector and a sinner for that matter. People may have said that he was short and, and uh, you, it's not uncommon to hear people referring to short people as Zacchaeus and calling them by these names as if it's a joke. But the truth of the matter is Zacchaeus had something that everyone, whether you are tall, fat, slim or short, we all desire to have. And that is the right curiosity. He had a desire that gave the curiosity within him a mobility, power to do the extraordinary. This day and this hour, we have something we can emulate from this young man or from this rich man. He was rich. The Bible notices that or puts it very clear that he was rich. He may have been short, but he had resources. He was short but had resources. This is a man that had credit on one side and didn't have on the other side. Nobody can have, it, uh, can have it all, all the time. You'll find that one time you have this, the other time, or people may qualify you for one thing and disqualify you for the other. That is life. What distinguishes us from everyone else around us is the desires within us. Desires causes us to do things that we never thought of. A right desire can cause you to do the right thing. Wrong desires causes you to do the wrong thing and identify you with wrongdoers. You will agree with me that Zacchaeus was not in the best company because he was a tax collector. But at this point in time, he is desiring to be in a company that everyone else is talking about. Both the bad and the good people are talking about Christ. Christ was the popular person at this point in time. And Zacchaeus is desiring 
to identify himself with the things of the day. And therefore he chose to see who Christ was. This man was searching and that is a fact. He could have stopped him from doing so. They could have stopped him. His stature could have stopped him. The crowd could have stopped him. But he chose not to be stopped by anything that was ahead of him. There are so many things that were obstructing him from seeing what he's desiring to see. But he chose to stand strong and desire to have something that everyone else is having. Such was, desire, or such was Zacchaeus' desire. He stood strong. He never allowed anything to bring him down. He stood strong. The scripture tells us he ran and climbed a sycamore tree. He did not just stand there. He did not say, everyone else is taller than me. Let me give up and go back home. He looked at something that can be of help to him, that can cause him to be elevated higher above everyone else. His desire brought within him a curiosity that brought about productivity. What are your desires this morning? What are they causing you or driving you to this morning? Because our desires will determine our productivity. If we desire something so great, we'll never be restricted by our lack of what we don't have or by our lack of size, our lack of productivity, our lack of anything. Our desires should drive us to what we long for. We should be driven by our desires to have a productivity that nobody else has. The desires you have may not be the desires I have. We may all have a desire to get saved, but reasons may be different. Everyone else was following Jesus for different reasons. Zacchaeus' desire to see Jesus, his reasons were different as we are going to see. His desires within him attracted him to something higher than everyone else. Attracted him to something that was taller than his obstacles. What are your desires this morning? Our God has placed a desire in each and every person who desires to see those desires move. If you don't desire, they will still be there. But get this, what you are attracted to is as a result of your desires. As a matter of fact, the scripture says that our desires are what causes us to be tempted the way we are tempted. The desires of our hearts will attract the kind of sin we will indulge in. The desires of our hearts will attract us or pull us to the purity that we long to see. What are your desires? If you have wrong desires within you, you will be attracting wrong things. If you have a godly desire within you, you will attract the right things. That's why God placed desires within us. Ours is to choose what do I want to do? What do I desire? What should I be attracted to? Zacchaeus was a sinner according to each and every person who knew him. What they didn't know is that he had a desire within him to do the right thing. He may have been short. He may have been a person who was not tall like each and every person who was around him. But he had a desire within him. That was, desire. That was uh, Zacchaeus for you. In this present day and time, we have many things that we need to focus on. Many things might have been said, but why are you focusing on what they're saying? Why are you not focusing on what you desire? Why are you not desiring to see what is within you come to pass? Many things have been said about Zacchaeus. But one thing stands out, that this man was searching and nothing could have stopped him from doing so. This man was searching and nothing could have stopped him from doing so. If we desire something so much, we will never have excuses. If we long to see something come to pass, excuses will not have a place in our hearts. Luke 19 verse 3 says, And he sought to see Jesus, who he was. That was his desire. He sought to see Jesus, who he was. Possibly he had not much respect, but he had great curiosity. 
He would like to see the man about whom everybody was talking about. But the press stopped him. The press stopped him. The press covered his face from seeing what he desired. This morning, what are your excuses? What are the reasons that you're giving for not being productive? For not bringing to pass your curiosity and your desires? For not bringing your desires to pass? You see, your desires attract. Your desires attract. And what you're attracted to, you become curious concerning it or concerning those things. And when curiosity overcomes you, you find yourself coming out of the norm and doing the abnormal thing that nobody else who does not have a desire can do. Desires produces curiosity. Curiosity pushes us to do the extraordinary. The crowd around him was so thick he could not penetrate. But this did not stop him from running ahead of the crowd, from running towards a place where nobody else would have thought of. He ran towards a place that was higher than the crowd that was taller than him. A place that was taller than his own stature. So he ran and climbed on a sycamore tree. Verse 4 to verse 5 tells us of Luke 19. And he ran before and climbed up into a sycamore tree. He ran before. He ran before the crowd. He ran before his obstacles. He ran before all these people and climbed on a level that was higher than the level of the obstacles. Rich men don't climb trees. Where I come from, there is a saying that says, if you climb a tree, you are pro probably a small boy. They call them a kahe. Trees are for ihes. It's a thing that is done by little people or Small children who have no desire for anything else but to risk their lives. Boys have a way of doing things that an old man cannot do. Boys, this is a saying we usually say, we say that all boys have a curiosity that can kill a lion. Small boys would walk along the road, get hit by a car. The car is taken to the garage but the small boy goes home. They have a curiosity that protects them in one way or the other. The zeal within them makes them desire things that an old man would see as if it's dangerous. Young boys will always be curious. They dare to do things a normal person cannot do. Here is Zacchaeus. He chooses to climb a sycamore tree. Listen. His curiosity overcame his dignity. So he climbed up into a sycamore tree. His curiosity overcame his dignity. This man chose to lose his dignity so that he can just see. But he not only saw, but also experienced Christ. You see, our curiosity causes us to experience. Our curiosity causes us to experience. But remember, you can never be curious if you don't have a desire. Our desires attract. Our desires attract. I tried to look at the word, or at the word sycamore. I tried to research and study what was this sycamore tree. What is it? And this is what I found. That a sycamore tree Very interesting. A sycamore tree that Zacchaeus climbed was the Fica sycamorus, also called the sycamore, the sycamore fig. Some scholars argue that the, uh, the Fica sycamorus was the original fig tree in the Garden of Eden, not the Fica carica. In Israel, sycamore trees grow where underground water is shallow and is most prominent in the southern Israel because of construction and rapid development. Under very favorable conditions, the sycamore tree may produce up to six crops per year. When I read this, it slapped me to wake up. 
that sycamore trees do well or grow where the water table, I mean, it can reach the water very easily. My question is, if Zacchaeus ran to a sycamore tree, what is this that he had or had knowledge of that others didn't have? This guy was a sinner. This guy in the area of spirituality was fruit, uh, fruitless. But we read and research and find out that on a favorable condition, a sycamore tree may produce up to six crops per year. Six crops, you have it six times a year. My question to you this morning is, where do you run to when you face obstacles that can not be cleared easily? Zacchaeus ran to a sycamore tree, a tree that produces fruits six times a year. A tree that was taller than any obstacles around him. Your desire will determine whom you attract. Where do you run to? Whom do you run to? See, well, let's look at the symbolism of the sycamore tree. When I was studying this, this is what I found. In Israel, the sycamore tree symbolized regeneration. <laughs> the sycamore tree symbolized regeneration. The word regeneration symbolizes or refers to someone who is spiritually reborn. Isn't it interesting to see Zacchaeus, a sinner by the definition of man, runs to a sycamore tree that symbolizes regeneration. A tree that is fruitful six times a year. A tree that is able to reach to water, that is able to know where it's supposed to grow. Zacchaeus runs to this tree and climbs the tree and is positioned high above others. His desire attracts him to a tree that is productive, a tree that knows how to source for water, a tree that symbolizes regeneration. Church, I got this from the internet and it slapped me awake and I was like, wait a minute, what is this that Zacchaeus knew that we didn't know? Zacchaeus got a spiritual rebirth through his discussion with Jesus at his home. Probably Zacchaeus had heard Levi speaking about Jesus. Levi was also a tax collector. If you read Mark 2.14, Levi was also a tax collector. Probably Zacchaeus had heard Levi talk about this man. He's a wonderful man. He called me and I left it all and I followed him. And his curiosity and desire to know Christ drove him to see who he was. Levi probably never kept quiet. He spoke to the fellow tax collectors. You see, there are some desires within us that can only be stirred up by listening to people who are talking positively. Probably never kept quiet. He continued speaking. He left his tax collecting business and followed Jesus. And probably Zacchaeus wondered, how can this man leave a well-paying job? To go and follow a guy who does not even own a donkey. A man who is followed by 11 other men who are always hungry and dusty. His curiosity was stirred up by a colleague. Let what I'm sharing with you today stir up whatever is within you for you to rise up. And let your desires attract the right things. Because our desires attract. The Bible continues to tell us that at this point in time, Zacchaeus never bothered to see or to know what everyone was speaking. He climbed up. But the Bible tells us when Jesus was walking, he came and stood where he was. 
and called him. I'm not going to go ahead of myself, but there are five things that Zacchaeus is teaching us today. Five important things. Five most important things that Zacchaeus did that we can learn from today. The first thing he sought, he was tired of what others were saying and wanted to see and experience for himself. He sought to see who Jesus was. He was tired of hearing from Levi. He was tired of hearing rumors around the street. He sought. That is the first thing he did. He sought to see. It is not enough to hear. We can fulfill our desires by searching and desiring to know and following it, following it up to find out what others are saying about God. He sought. He was tired about what people were saying. Verse 3 tells us he sought to see who Jesus was. You see, you can never quench your thirst by watching those who are drinking water. If I watch you drinking water and I'm thirsty, my thirst will still remain as you quench yours. If you long to quench your thirst, rise up, go fetch the water and drink it. Your thirst will drive you to places where you've never thought of. If you go to the northern part of this nation, you'll find people going and trekking for six hours just to fetch a bucket of water, just to fetch a 20, gal a 20 liter gallon of water for six hours because they want to quench their thirst. If I have water and you don't have and you're thirsty, my water can't help you if it's in my bottle. You have to stretch your hand and allow your desire to humble you, to request for what I have. The second thing that we learn from Zacchaeus is this. He separated himself from the rest. He separated himself from the rest. He never allowed the obstacles before him to restrict him. This is verse 4. Verse 4 tells us very clearly. Let me read it again. Verse 4 says this. So he ran ahead and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was going to pass that way. He ran ahead. He separated himself from the rest. I've been asking myself, who told Zacchaeus God is, Jesus is going to pass through that route that he ran to? Our desires attract. Our desires attract. The fact that the majority are Stating a thing doesn't make it right. And the fact that the majority are gathered in one place doesn't mean that God is in that place. Zacchaeus chose not to be with the crowd. He ran to a place where nobody else was and climbed a tree that nobody else. He ran to a tree. And now we are learning that a tree that he ran to, which is a sycamore tree, symbolizes regeneration. It's a, fruit, it's a tree that bears fruit six times a year. This man didn't have fruits in his life. This man was short of stature. I mean, he went to a tree that was higher than him. Why is he doing all these things? He had a desire. He had a desire that gave him a curiosity. And his curiosity caused him to do the extraordinary. The third thing he did, he chose a level that was higher than everyone else. A sycamore tree. He chose a level that was higher than everyone else. You see, when people seem to be a hindrance, when people seem to, to ground you in everything you do, when people choose not to believe in you, when people see you as the worst person on earth, change the position. Change the position. Become that ego that fights a, a, a poisonous snake and kills a poisonous snake. What makes it victorious is the fact that it changes the battleground. It takes the snake to the sky where the sky can never even dare fight. And the ego defeats it. When everyone else is strong where you are weak, change your position and you will be strong where your desire takes you. His desire was above restrictions and inabilities. He chose to, 
to go to a level where obstacles could not be found. He went to a place where obstacles could not follow. He chose a position where obstacles could not follow. It's only him who could do that. Everyone else was dignified. He chose to be undignified. He chose to be different. He chose to be counted as a person who does not really care what the world says. I would rather be in a kiosk and see God rather than be in a crusade and confused. I would rather be in a, in a shack rather than be in a beautiful temple where God is not. The fourth thing that Zacchaeus did, he obeyed Jesus without questioning the reason why. In verse 6 he was told, come down. The Bible tells us he came down immediately. He obeyed without asking, why should I come down? I'm enjoying. There are obstacles down there. There are hindrances down there. These people are taller than me. He never reasoned anything. He said, mm -hmm, you've called me. I've been curious to know who you are. He came down. He never raised any question. Why? His desires were being fulfilled at last. The fifth thing he did, he willingly chose restitution. Let's read verse 8 together. Verse 8 is a very interesting verse of scripture. In Luke 19, verse 8, it says, Then Zacchaeus stood and said to the Lord, Look, Lord, I give half of my goods to the poor, and if I have taken anything from anyone by false accusation, I restore for fault. Zacchaeus in verse 8 chose restitution. When Jesus called him to climb down in verse 6, Jesus told him these words, Today I'm going to be what? Zacchaeus, make haste and come down, for today I must stay at your home. Listen to that. I must stay at your home. Jesus saw Zacchaeus' desire. He never went to any of the people who are following him. He never went to their home. He never stayed in any of their home. The desire that Zacchaeus had attracted Christ. The curiosity he had was different from the curiosity of the crowd. He needed to seek and find who Christ was. What are your desires today concerning our Lord and Savior? What is driving you to where Christ is today? Are you comfortable with the status quo? Christ longs to see a people who will long to see and seek who he really is and for who he really is and what he is doing. Zacchaeus never waited for a sermon to believe. He only needed Jesus by his side. So Jesus came to his house and when Zacchaeus saw Jesus is coming and everyone else is still saying he's eating with sinners and tax collectors, Jesus never turned away. He said, no, 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 he has... He may be a sinner, but he has a desire. So this, this desire attracted Jesus to him. Not his sins, not his righteousness, the desires. Zacchaeus never waited for a sermon to believe. He only needed Jesus by his side. When everyone was judging him, Jesus chose to eat with him. Jesus, just as he was with you and I, he is with you and I. Jesus is with you and I. Even when you're not good, even when you don't sound like you know what you're saying, even when you're so sinful, even when your thoughts are so rotten, Jesus is still by you. If he would not be with you today, you'd not be listening to me. He's given you a grace that is so good. He's overlooked your sin. And he's where you are. He's still Emmanuel over your life. That's why you've chosen to turn on this channel today. To listen to me. The fifth thing that he did. He chose restitution. restitution. What is the final result? Of the desire that Zacchaeus had. In Luke 19 verse 8, verse 8 through 10 we read. Then Zacchaeus stood and said to Luke Lord. I give half of my goods to the poor. And if I have taken anything from anyone 
my, by false accusation, I restore fourfold. I want to see what Jesus says in the next statement. And Jesus said to him in verse 9, Today salvation has come to this house because he also is the son of Abraham. Notice those words. Salvation has come to this house. Salvation never came to Zacchaeus' house when he climbed down the tree. Salvation never came to Zacchaeus' house when he fed Jesus. You see, some of the things we do are just but religion or religious activities. Salvation came when Zacchaeus saw the need to restore what he had taken. Salvation came when he saw the need for repentance. Not only did, was he willing to restore what he had taken, but he was willing even to share double or half what he owned rightfully. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. That is what Luke 19.10 tells us. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. The desires of Zacchaeus fulfills the purpose of Christ's coming. Our desires should drive us to where Christ is. Our desires should always drive us to see the purpose of Christ on earth fulfilled. What are your desires this morning? Christ is calling us to have a desire within us that will cause us to be curious, to seek to find out who he is. Remember, desires attract. Desires attract. I don't know what people have restricted you from doing. Probably you've been called a good for nothing fellow. Probably even your own thoughts have been an obstacle to your life. You don't think as if you can ever make it. You've never thought as if you can ever amount to anything. I want to let you know this. Beside you there is a sycamore tree that produces fruits six times a year. Beside you there is a higher ground you can run to. Let your curiosity focus on Christ. Let your curiosity drive you. Let your desire push your curiosity to see where Christ is. Don't focus on human beings. Focus on Christ and all shall be well. If you are listening to me and you've been discouraged this morning, you no longer have dreams and you no longer desire to these things come to pass because people have discouraged. I want you to know this. Jesus came to seek and to find and to save that which was lost. You may be lost in your thoughts. You may be lost in your acts. But Jesus is here today to restore you. Are you willing to be restored? If you are that person and you are saying, Pastor, I would like to be restored. Many things have obstructed me for so long, but I want to be restored. I want Jesus to come into my life to eat and drink with me. Just repeat this prayer after me. Dear Lord Jesus, here I am. I'm short of so many things. I'm not productive. I've never been productive and people have said so. But today, I choose to hear and to listen to your word. That if I desire to seek you, I will find you. If I desire, and my desire is greater than my shortfall, you will stand right where I am and you will call me into the fold. I desire to find you and to see you come into my life. And therefore I open my heart. I ask you to come in, save me, and make me a new creation. I believe you came from heaven and died on that cross so that I may have life and have it more abundantly. I receive you by faith. I ask you to give me a pastor who will pastor me in spirit and in truth. Give me a fellowship that will walk with me as I grow. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you said that prayer for the first time, please find a pastor near you. Tell them you are a baby Christian who desires to walk with Christ and request them to walk with you. If you don't have a pastor near you, wherever you are,
kindly call our number. Go to our website, go to our Facebook account, go to our Twitter and Instagram. You'll find our contact. Kindly call us. Or write an email to info at mombasalighthousechurch.co.ke. We'll be glad to work with you in your first step of salvation. Let me bless us today. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Father, let that priestly blessing be upon each and every person who is listening today. Enlarge their territories and grant them peace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you and see you next Sunday.